Top Gun Maverick is a great movie. There, I said it, review over. What? Are you still here? Go on, grab your coat and head down to the pictures because this movie is unmissable in the cinema. Okay, well, since you're still here, then I might as well expand upon my enthusiasm. This movie is a real, honest-to-God sequel to the original Top Gun. It isn't a rip-off, it isn't a cash-in, this movie actually cares about the original movie, pays homage to that movie, wants you to remember it and watch it again, and then watch Maverick and feel like it's the same story. There is no Hollywood left-wing nutjob agenda here. This movie really, and I can't state this enough, this movie really does feel as though you left the tape running after the original film ended, and it just rolled straight onto this movie. They have the same feeling, as though they could have been filmed back to back, which is quite surprising after the sad death of Tony Scott, the director of the original movie. But Tom Cruise's huge influence is what kept this movie alive and made sure that there was no way this was going to be anything but a true sequel. This movie is untouched by the modern world's gender politics and instead just tries to be realistic. Yes, there's diversity. Yes, there are female aviators. Well, aviator. And it is all just the way it should be. Maybe it's because the script predates Hollywood's modern madness, or maybe it is simply because Tom Cruise wanted things to be as perfect as possible. Or maybe we simply got lucky and this movie flew under the radar of the pink-haired loonies. You see what I did there? Radar? Yeah, no, sorry, I'll get my coat. Whatever the reason, this movie is exactly what Hollywood needed and what we the public have been crying out for. It's a movie that reflects the modern world actually as it is, not as some Hollywood crazy wants it to be. And it is also a throwback to when movies were simpler. Good guys, bad guys, good guys find bad guys. Good guys make plan to defeat bad guys. Bad guys fight back, but good guys win because they are morally superior and because heroes are awesome and sadly missed in these modern times of, oh no, he's the wrong shade, slash sex. And I'm triggered just looking at how straight he is. Why can't it be a trans hero? The crazies are out there and they are ruining it for everyone, even though they barely make up a number that could be considered a minority. You'd need a giant magnifying glass outfitted with a coloured hair sensor, searching the globe for months to find even one of them. The only other way is to go on Twitter, where the levels of censorship that filter out all the normal people and ban all the wrong think allows the nutters to float to the surface like the bad apples they are. And from here, the modern media scoops them up and throws them at our faces, day after day. But Top Gun Maverick does away with this and wants only to tell the further story of Maverick and his continuing adventure as the only naval pilot in modern times to have shot down three enemy aircraft during peacetime, among many other accolades and distinctions which are hinted at in an early scene in this movie. There is nothing contrived about this movie. It's not trying to be anything except another part of the original story. The movie is actually set in about 2015, so it's supposedly a little under 30 years since the events of the original, which makes it, well, seven years out of date on release. There are hints of this time period during the dialogue, not to mention the F-18s they were using were retired back in 2019. But let's talk about the story, and what a story it is. We meet Maverick again, 29 years later, and he is now a captain, which is strange as at his age he should have been a rear admiral at the very least, or kicked out of the navy. But this is Maverick we're talking about, and there's no way he would be happy being grounded in some base, pushing pens around a desk, while he knows that he is still the best pilot the Navy has to offer. No, instead, he is hanging out his own little hangar, tinkering with his old P-51 Mustang. Incidentally, this plane actually belongs to Tom Cruise, and he can be seen flying it at the end of the movie, which is very cool. Maverick is also collecting motorcycles, and he still has his old Kawasaki GPZ-900, which makes a reappearance moments later when Pete Mitchell cool sign Maverick. Damn, I need my own cool sign now. Hmm, maybe Lemming, as I have a tendency to jump off of stuff. Anyway, Maverick heads off to his current job in a scene which is very reminiscent of the original movie as he rides his motorbike along the side of a runway. His current job is testing a hypersonic plane and trying to achieve Mach 10 before the project funding is taken away by Admiral Whats-His-Face, played by Ed Harris in a role he could do in his sleep. Admiral What's-His-Face thinks that unmanned planes are the future, and anything with a pilot is a waste of money. Maverick goes a bit spartan and tells him, Maybe so, sir, but not today. Then Admiral What's-His-Face tells him that if it were up to him, Maverick would be grounded for good. A strange thing to say to an accepted legend within the Navy, and curiously something that almost all of his senior officers seem to want. 
The only exception is Iceman, played by Val Kilmer, who is the guy pulling the strings behind getting Maverick sent back to Top Gun. Without going into too much detail, Maverick is needed to train a bunch of elite pilots how to fly well enough to complete a mission in a foreign country that is ignoring a NATO treaty that says no one should be trying to make nuclear weapons. And obviously, we have no idea who this country could be. <coughs> North Korea! <coughs> Iran! <coughs> what? No, that's just a cough, yeah. The new pilots are a bunch of guys and gal that will feel very familiar to you as they echo their 1986 compatriots very well and each of them is just perfectly cast. Maverick then finds that one of the pilots he will have to train is his late best friend Goose's son named, and I'm told that he chose this name himself, Rooster. No, that's not a joke. Hijinks occur, which are very reminiscent of the original, except that instead of Jester and Viper, this time we have Maverick, and he is a much better pilot than those guys were. So it gives us some very Mav-like moments that would have had the late great Goose not knowing whether to yeehaw or tell Maverick off for trying to get them kicked out. The mission, which is pretty much a no way back affair, is so hard that only Maverick truly has the skill to see it through. And so against the better judgment of other Admiral What's-His-Face, he is given the role of wing leader. And that is all I'm going to tell you about the story, because I was not kidding when I said go and see this movie. It is easily the best thing to come out of Hollywood for quite a while. The cast is just perfect. I can imagine they agonised over these decisions, trying to get just the right feel from the actors. And they succeeded. Goose's son looks very like him, and the others are all as full of themselves and needing to be taken down a peg as the guys were in the original. And Jennifer Connelly as the love interest doesn't look 20 years older than Tom, which was a bit of an improvement over Kelly McGillis, who always looked like she could have been his mum. Another character which I'm going to give a special shout out to because I think he is one of the most important characters in the movie is Lieutenant Jake Saracen, cool sign Hangman. I give him a special shout out, one, because I think he was fantastically acted by Glenn Powell, and two, because if this story is ever to continue, then I think this is the character that will take the lead. He is essentially the new Maverick, and has a very interesting arc within the movie. Watch out for it, as they don't really dwell on it much. So, in conclusion, everything good you've heard about this movie is true, and everything bad is wrong. It is beyond worth your time, and I will be disappointed in anyone who misses it. I went to see this in an IMAX and it was worth every penny. I was even charged a reasonable amount of money for popcorn, which I kept very quiet about just in case the guy's finger had slipped and he hadn't noticed that it was cheap. I have rarely been to see movies twice in the cinema, but for this I am making an exception. Hollywood hasn't made me this happy for a decade, so for once I find myself in the uncomfortable situation of having to say, thanks Hollywood. Of course, the next movie they put out will either destroy another little piece of my childhood or be calling me an ist or a phobe, but for now, I am happy. This has been Movie Suck, wondering what the hell the world is coming to, but liking it for once. Signing out. Leave a like, share, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the flip side.